trying to show off or something in the My Lord Jesus. It's just, it's, it's because we hide the word of God in our hearts a certain way. Yes. And a lot of times when God speaks to his body, to his church, yes. he yes. speaks to us through scripture. Amen. And so the way we read and knew the scriptures, a lot of it was in King James. And so yes. that's how a lot of people memorize, you know, thou shalt not murder, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor, thou shalt not cheat. Uh, see, um, so these things uh, are are they are they're customary and that's what comes to mind. But usually, when the Holy Spirit gives me an interpretation for the body, it's just in simple English, unless I am unless it's a scripture. You know, I learned to memorize in King James, then I'll quote the scripture. Yeah. And uh, put it away. But that's just how he moves through me. And it doesn't mean that when he moves to somebody else differently, that that's an error, because it's not. We are all individual, we're all unique. But he's one God. And the message will always be the same whether he says you or thou. The message is still the same. Okay? So I, I just tell you that because I don't want you to be confused. I don't want you thinking that, you know, uh, if somebody is, say, is saying something a certain way, they're saying it wrong, or if they're saying it, no, it's not how they say it, it's what they say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Does that bear witness with the Spirit of God, and does it match what the Scriptures teach us, okay? That's what you compare it against. So, mm -hmm. the witness of the Holy Spirit of God, mm -hmm. and the Scripture He left for us, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and that's that's what we test everything by. Um, so, um, we... Receive the word of the Lord today with joy. Amen. Yeah? Right. See, I don't even remember what it was. I'm going to have to go back and listen to the tape. Yeah. Um, uh, the devil was trying to keep me from getting it. He was trying to distract me right in the middle. Right in the middle of you know, All right the now. And the devil was trying to whisper in my ear and tell me yeah. that, that uh, who am I fooling? You know, look at this. Look at this little congregation. We don't have any. Uh, we're doing a away and we're just going to die into it. But you know what? Hallelujah. Guess what? The devil's a liar. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. He has been from the beginning. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And that there is what? No truth in him. Amen. No truth. No, There's no truth in the words of your accuser. Yeah. There's Amen. no truth. And and even what's so beautiful is even where we are weak, and there sometimes is truth in things that we did in the natural and the flesh. Because of the blood of Jesus, there is no truth. Because what oh, sin? Jesus washes our sins away with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Once we come to repent, <laughs> and we have, we have repented of our sins with an earnest heart, and we turn oh, from the yeah. best of our ability, and we ask the Holy Spirit to take control. Right? Amen. And then we continue to be led by the Holy Spirit, and we will be, you know, don't, don't misquote me, don't say, Pastor's preaching on what say, don't always say, girl, easy, gospel. No. It's a harder walk when you listen to the Spirit of God and say, Amen. Hallelujah. It's a harder walk because you've got to, He is the, the perfect one. Yes, he and is. He required perfection. And the more we look at Him, the more we realize we cannot be perfect. But we sure can do our very best to please our Father. Great God, great God. We can do our best. But yes. uh, when the devil starts making accusations against you, I want you to get in the habit of not defending them. And when people start coming to you and accusing you of things, I want you to get in the habit. I've had to. I've had to. When people come to me and they say, I have one of the dearest people in my life who I love and I honor and I respect and I adore. Mm -hmm. And she is a true prophet of God. And she is like my flesh and blood sister. I love her so much. And she's been so beautiful into my life and love. Yes, yes. And she came up to me this week with something so hateful for <laughs> So hateful, hateful words. And and I know they weren't from a place of hate, they were from a place of 
Now, don't get me wrong, okay? But they were from a place of religion, Pastor. Yes. Yeah, they weren't from a place of God's heart. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Religious tradition versus what God is truly speaking. Yeah. I don't say religious tradition is bad. There's a lot of wonderful, beautiful things in the traditions that the church has. Mm -hmm. that we have. But we, sh we cannot, I mean, when somebody takes the exact same thing that Jesus did and blasts you for doing that and doesn't even see that they're wrong yes. and continue to defend their position regardless of what Jesus said. All right, now. And so we have to be really careful not to jump on the bandwagon. I mean, I was so depressed at this, and I jumped on the devil's bandwagon against myself. You, you ever done that? You ever hear it? You're right, I'm a worm. <laughs> I'm not a mighty man of God, no, nope, I'm a worm. You need to step all over me, you know? We right. get defeated sometimes. We yeah. feel yeah. we feel yeah. defeated sometimes. We watch our mouth. But we are not defeated. We are more than conquerors. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. We are more than conquerors. We are overcomers. Amen. Yeah. We might be down, but we are getting up. Right. We might have fallen down, but we're getting up. That's what brother, brother a big hand Anderson he said. He said, I, I've never, as a Christian, I've never been down, I've never been up, I'm getting up. All right. So when I start feeling like I'm down, I remind myself of that, that even where we fail, because we do fail, all of us, right? Yes, right. Yeah. Even where we do <coughs> fail, that's, we don't want to be a stumbling block, you know. Right. But that's really the Holy Spirit's job to fix it. That's what he's, that's yeah. why Jesus Amen. left them. Amen. Amen. He's going to fix our hearts of things yes. that are sinful, things that are not pleasing to God. And if you're listening, you, you don't have to be told by a pastor or a friend or an evangelist or an apostle or a teacher. You don't have to be told because the Holy Spirit corrects you. Amen. Amen. And you just have to get in line with what the Spirit of God is saying to you. Yes, Lord. Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah. What is that noise I'm hearing? It sounds like a Harley Davidson outside. Is that a Harley Davidson? <laughs> I, I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind as close now as ever be. Go get my children, go get my children, and at the midnight cry, we'll be going home. Yes, Lord. I look around me, I see prophecies fulfilled every day, All right? The signs of the time. They're appearing everywhere. I can almost hear the Father as he says, Son, go get my children. And at the midnight, the bride that cries will rise. A heart of glad to call his children. The dead in Christ shall rise.
I look around, I see prophecies fulfilled everywhere. The sun is on the time, they're appearing everywhere. I can always see the Father as he says, Look at my children, but I will live in the life.
it's a first is always you know, we just we forget it. And we really to tell others, especially the believers. But he's always saying, he's always saying, I love you. Amen. I love you with the everlasting love of a father. That's what yes, my father is saying. And Jesus, he's saying, I love you, I died for you. Yes. I took your place. Yes, amen. Why do you keep trying to take your brothers and your sisters and put them back on that cross? I did that already. Because of my great love for you. Yes, Lord Jesus. He, he was saying that so when we were praying, he just he was saying that that sentence to me over and over and over. And Jesus was saying, he was saying, quit trying to put each other on the cross. All right now. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Quit Christ. trying to put each other on the cross. I went to the cross so you don't have to. Amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. He took our sin. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Don't continue in your sin. Yield to the Spirit of God and ask him. He will, he will guide you and he will lead you. And you will know Hallelujah. you are in step with the Holy Spirit because it will line up with the Word of God. Amen. It will never contradict his work. Yes, Lord. He will also, as you study things, you know, there are there are things in scripture, a lot of things, and I'm not a miraculous on any single issue. Okay, I want you to understand this. The, 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 when we study scriptures, there's a reason he says, study to show yourself approved. Amen. Amen. Study to show yourself approved. Amen. And to God. Yes. Rightly dividing the word of what? True. Study to show yourself approved. Amen. Rightly dividing the word of God. Amen. Working out your own salvation with what? Lax daisiness. <laughs> with fear and trimming, we're not to be like, you know, oh, everything's all, you know, we don't run around like hippie hey, love children all the time. Sometimes, yeah. The Holy Spirit, you know, just love, 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 love. Appreciate your man, this is your call. Love your neighbors, and it's just so done. And sometimes we're just so full of that spirit of unity and love and, and, and everything else. But we have to have. A holy reverence of God. Yes, yes. And just how truly holy He is. And as we get, seek His face, not His hand. You know, you, you know when your children are growing up, most of you have children or have raised children. You, you really, you, there's a marked differentiation from childhood and immaturity to adulthood and maturity. All right. And that. Distinction is, it becomes less about me, the child, and more about you, the follower. All right now. You follow me? You know, there's a time when your children, they only came to you and they said, Mommy or Daddy, can I go next door and play? Mommy or Daddy, can you buy me that new bicycle? Mommy or Daddy, can we go to Disneyland for vacation? Mommy or Daddy, can my best friend come stay the night? I'm like, please, 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 please. And when you said no, they would say, please, please, let me go to Tommy's house. Please. But you happen to know as the father that Tommy's dad just got out of prison is going through some violent times and All right, the yeah. Holy Spirit's working in his life. You're over there praying with him and you, and you love Tommy's father, but you know that for your child it's not going to be safe. Now that is a totally fake scenario like this made up. Okay? All right, no. <clears throat> but it's happened, I know it has, in many lives. Many times you have to tell your children no because you have part of the information they don't have. Amen. Well, they don't even have the ability to understand what you know because their mind isn't <coughs> developed enough to <coughs> Yes, yes. You understand? Mm -hmm. Praise God. But as your children grow up, they stop coming to you and asking you 
for as the <coughs> he always goes to our parents for me. But they stop their their shift, it changes. And it's no longer me, 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 I want, I want, I want, I want, fix it, fix it, fix it, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. Oh, make me happy and comfortable. All right, yeah. That's how children are. But the focus changes and you start to say, oh, I want to really do good. I want to be at the top of my class because I want to make my dad proud of me. Or I want to, I really want to treat the unpopular person with kindness and love. I want to be their friend. Yes. Because um, I know that's what Jesus yes. would do. And they start changing and wanting to please the father, our natural fathers, our natural mothers. And they, instead of their desire to be all about them. You'll fight when people are in movies at church. And you just have to just smile. And not I'm trying to do not become patronizing. And pray. And you'll grow, you'll realize it. But you know, there are people that they come to church and it's all about them. Alright. I mean, excuse me, I thought we were here to worship the one true God. <laughs> all right, man. You know, how is your today? Oh, I didn't feel blessed at all. I didn't get blessed at all. So my family's tough. Not my immediate family, but you know, my extended family, they're all hillbillies. They say, that's all. I didn't get blessed at all. <laughs> and I remember one day after a, a service like that, you know, where it was a rough service. Our pastor was going through something, you know, and we all felt it. And uh, there was strife. There were people coming against him, and uh, it was just really not a, a really. Uh, it was a heavy environment, but we all had to push through it together because we're a family. That's what families do. You push the things together. And we were doing it, and we came home and. And, and my dad's sister had been visiting our church. It wasn't this church. We had been over at a different church. And our dad and, um, and, and, and his sister had come, and, and they came in and, and started that kind of talk, you know. But I, you know, I just wasn't blessed at all. And after about the tenth time of saying that, I remember my dad says, Well, we weren't there to bless you. We were there to bless God. Amen. We were there to bless God. That's what you went for. We were there to worship Him. Amen. But you'll notice people come to the church. But love them anyway. Yes, sir. We're there complaining that their microphone isn't as loud as another person's and their voice is pretty near. Love them anyway. Amen. When these are things I was guilty of. So I'm pulling on my own things so nobody else has to pull that. <laughs> oh, yeah, that would make me so mad. I was on the, on the, on the elite part of the right ride now. We got all the special events. I got some, he would churn me some so low. It made me so mad. But you see, I wasn't mature and senior. I didn't realize I wasn't living well. And a poor man. If you have one part of the foot sticking out all by itself, it doesn't sound good. Uh -huh. right. It's supposed to work. <laughs> you know? Otherwise, it sounds like, yeah! <laughs> with the harmony on the top. So, the sound line was actually a very good sound. And he would make it blend. So, it was a pl so, so, actually, it did me a favor because. The public hearing me wouldn't realize that I was not trained well enough yet to pull back and blend because it wasn't. So he did it for me. Okay. And uh, that's like God. A lot of times, He does something in our lives. He does something in our, in our lives to accomplish His purpose, purpose in us and to make us look good. Because he's our dad. He's proud of us. He wants us to look good. Do you want your children to go and get up and fail in front of everybody? Right. And if they have a bad attitude about something, you kind of don't, you kind of want to keep it hidden. You know? That's righteous. You know, when Joseph didn't know that Mary truly was a virgin, he didn't know that until the angel appeared to him. Amen. He didn't know it. 
He thought she, I'm not going to use the kids, but I feel my mom says it's true. So, but when uh, she found herself to be the child, he thought she was unfaithful and maybe a loosey goosey or something, you know? But he still liked her. Right? And the Bible says because he was a righteous man, he thought in his heart to cover her sin. Yes. He was being the type of Christ. Mm-hmm. He was being like a Boaz. Not covering up from who it needed to be dealt with. He was going to deal with it with her. Personally, mm-hmm. she was not going to be able to enjoy the place of a wife in his bed. She would have to live with her own, but she, maybe this is hypothetical. She didn't really, because she did nothing wrong. But in his mind, he was going to put her away quietly. Mm-hmm. So they wouldn't stone her to death, really. Because that was what they did. The, the witnesses said they were death. And they, they took it quite literally in the Bible days. They stoned, you know, the women got stoned when they were caught in the act of adultery. And if you were not married and you're with child, that's Proof enough to most people mm-hmm. that you had committed adultery or at least fornication. So, our Heavenly Father, He doesn't want to embarrass you. He doesn't want to cause you to fall on your face in front of everybody. I mean, that looks bad on the family of God. So much wrong, right? Are, are you with me? Amen. And when I say he covered in sin, I'm not. There's a big difference to the blood of Jesus washing away our sin and covering up dirty little secrets and keeping to do them. That's not what I'm talking about. There, but there are some things that you have, well, all things you should, but some things it is so critical. That you get the heart of God and the voice of the Holy Spirit in your ear before you act or say anything, no matter what you were taught. All right. No matter what you do, you've got to know the voice of God. You've got to learn His voice. You've got to learn His presence. Man. How do I know my mom's voice? Because she's yelled at me enough times I know her voice. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was an unruly child, I guess. I knew a voice. My daddy, I knew his voice. We didn't have cell phones. When my daddy came home from work, my mom had cell phone on the table. My mom or my dad, they got it on the phone, usually my dad. And he'd say, Timmy! And he'd scream into the neighborhood mm-hmm. area. That's what all the dads did. He's went out on the corner yeah. and screamed your name and you come running in. Supper time! <laughs> <laughs> well, every dad in the neighborhood just about yelled it was supper time at some certain time. And now the whole neighborhood did run to that man's yeah. house. Mm-hmm. Only his children did. Amen. Because we know the voice of our parents. Amen. If we spend time with them. Yeah, come on. <laughs> if we live with them. Yes. And what's the name of this church? Victory what? Tabernacle. Tabernacle. Tabernacle is a building, but a building is supposed to be a representation of our body. Amen. Okay? And tabernacle means dwell with. Mm-hmm. And so his intent, and that's why we're, we're, it all ties together. When we talk about, I think a lot of you are getting it now, when, we, when I did a lot of teaching on the Hebrew roots of our faith and the Jewish feasts and all that, it wasn't so because I wanted to be Jewish. I already am Jewish. I don't care about that. I'm part of the one new man, the bride of Christ. That's who I am. That's my identity. Praise all. That's who I am. And whether you like it or whether you agree with it or not, I know something. I know I'm righteous. Hallelujah, Jesus. I know I'm a saint. I didn't say I'm right. I'm self-righteous or I am perfect in my flesh. I said I am righteous and I am a saint because I am blood-bought the blood of oh, Jesus, the Messiah. Amen. That's the issue I've heard many of you. Yeah. Um, you know the name of Jesus? Start walking. Not in arrogance, but in awe and 
deference of the family world. Praise God, praise God. My father used to say, you're a hinkle. Hinkles don't behave that way. Hallelujah. I'm so glad, I don't know, to the family of God. Remember the song? Yeah. Red. What is it? Washed in the family. Washed in the family too. Cleansed by his blood. Joined hands with Jesus as I travel this road. A part of the family. Family of God. I'm so glad I'm a part of the family of God. Hallelujah. 
continue helping them get, get to place where they can start losing weight. And uh, I'm glad, but that's, that's, I love them just as much. I hope people love me just as much when I was fat as when I was thin, you know? Amen. Amen. That's, Amen. we're supposed to love people where they are. Hallelujah, Jesus. <laughs> My aunt, I guess. Yeah, I'm calling you out on it. You should have called me out enough times that you were here. Uh, she's been a bright cloud of witnesses. I don't believe in jokes, but I believe she's with the Lord. And I'm joking a little bit, but boy, when I was heavy, she made sure I knew it was sinful to be heavy. You know, so she would say, we get together. She was a little plump in herself, and she never saw that in her. And, uh, Beautiful woman had loved the Lord, loved us so much. She was a perfect, right? Tell me a lot of that. She prayed me through the baptism of the Holy Ghost. No, no. She was there for me so many times in my life that nobody was. So I say this just from a pure heart of love. I can see my own dad a little bit. And you, don't know you, you know it's true. You would have been offended if every time he was sat at Thanksgiving and he said a prayer. It was always in the fight. And Lord just, we kept against those old demons of gluttony that got the whole table. We cast them out of the house. <laughs> Every Christmas and Thanksgiving, they would have cast out the demons of gluttony, you know? Yeah. And, uh, but I, I honestly, you see me, I'm laughing. I just think it was hilarious. The first time I hurt my feelings and I cried is I went to my baby. But after that, I thought, oh my gosh, only I had to get away from it. You know? You tell me that I had, I had, I would go to sit down and she would go, oh, 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 stop! And I'm like, what? Is the house on fire? And she'd say, come, don't you weigh a little bit more than 250 pounds? Ah, that furniture <laughs> can only hold someone that weighs 250 pounds. <laughs> Here, can you sit in this um, wheelchair I brought in for you? Oh, Lord, have mercy. <gasps> Oh, look, come to my kitchen. Your soles of your shoes will put indentations in my linoleum because you're so heavy. Oh, it's not. But I honestly, it, I think it's so funny. Oh, my God, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what she was really saying? Because this is what she was taught. And this is what I started saying about the only thing to do. We were taught to be that way to people in church, you know? That's exaggerated for them. But, but what she was really saying to me, and why I can laugh about it now, is, I love you. And it's not healthy for you to be overweight. And you can't live the life that God wants you to live, looking that way, feeling that way, and you won't live as long as he wants you to live. And you won't accomplish as much as he has for you to accomplish. And I'm going to say whatever it takes. I'm going to hurt your feelings if I have to. I'm going to pray every. I'm going to, and I love you that much that I want you to get right. Amen. Right. Right. You see, we have to know the heart out of new people before we get all. Because Psalms 1 19, 164, or 165, I think it doesn't make sense sometimes. But it says in the King James, Great peace. Have they which love my law, Amen. and nothing shall offend them. Amen. That's pretty good, huh? Yes. Great peace. Oh, because I can get offended so easily. Mm -hmm. But you know what? The older I get, the more I realize that those silly things didn't matter to me really that much. Either. Amen. So we're gonna we're going to. Turn things over right now. Let's pray. And then all doctors, that was my sermon today. That's what the Holy Spirit did. Praise God. Praise God. Had for you. I hope you receive something from the Lord. Right. But if I have a sermon, I didn't, um, obviously, this wasn't the message I was going to preach today. Um, but it's what the Lord gave me. And, and so if that was tweaking uh, and, uh, and put my full flips to it, I would say, God says to his church, I love you. Yes. God says to me, me and each of us, listen to my voice. 
I sent my spirit to teach you, to guide you, to direct you, and to show you my ways. Mm -hmm. Follow the leading of my spirit. And love each other. Love each other unto restoration. I always feel like people think I'm talking directly to them. Because I'm standing in front of Brother Cleo, doesn't mean I'm talking to Brother Cleo about something. It just means that I, I love him and I feel comfortable walking up to him, you know? Right. Uh, I miss him too. It's a little bad, but he's really a treat. Um, Thank you. Thank you. If, I have, if I have the bullets that serve as the, the points, the three main points would be God loves us. He died for us, so we don't have to. And he left us his spirit. And he's, the spirit teaches us what the Father wants us to do. And the scripture confirms it. We'll sit beyond it. And we should be obedient to the spirit, knowing that each other, we're not always perfect. And we're not going to be. And, and we, we need to realize that for every finger we point, there's three coming back. <laughs> That's how it is. And if, we, if we're doing that a lot, and I say this not, this is not about any situations. Of any, I just felt like the Holy Spirit just told me, somebody thinks you're getting on to me. No, this is not about any situation. It's not about anything in the church, in the church, out of, it's about what is the, a principle to live by. That when you start being an accuser of your brother and you're in league with Satan, and you give him the weaponry he needs to attack you, and it's right in your own hand, you're attacking yourself. Amen. And so we need to, and, and, and when you see something that, that, that doesn't seem right, you should, you don't just have to be quiet. You go, you go to God first, and then he tells you to, you go talk to your brother and your sister privately and find out what the heck is going on. Right? Yeah. He'll sit down and have a, you know, a telephone prayer meeting about it, and everybody in the world will talk about that person, and then by the time you get together, you know, you know that's not what we do, right? All right. And uh, I've seen too many people leave the body of Christ because they didn't feel like we love each other. Mm -hmm. And that's got to stop. Yes. Imagine. That's got to stop. We need to imagine. Amen. And we need to preach the truth, teach the truth, walk the truth, model the truth, live the truth. What is the truth? The Word of God is the Word of God. What is the truth? The what Jesus did is the truth. What is the truth? Jesus Messiah came, lived a born of a virgin, lived a perfect life, showed us how we should live, took our place on Calvary as the sacrificial lamb that was slain for the forgiveness of the world Amen. so we don't have to, rose from the grave on the third day just like he said he would, mm -hmm. and sent his Holy Spirit to teach us all things, to comfort us, and to show us how to walk. And he rose again and went to heaven and sent the Holy Spirit. And he said, don't be amazed, get busy. Right? Don't be amazed, get busy. Mm -hmm. Do my work. So when I come back, I find you doing the things our daddy wants us to do. Amen. Not talking about each other, not tearing each other down, not pointing out each other's faults. Because yeah, right now, sometimes those <laughs> faults are really real. Hallelujah, Jesus. But God's working on us, each one of us. And you might just do, I might do. That's why I don't, I don't preach on sin, because I don't believe, I don't believe sin is right. We have a little more sin in our life. But I believe you reap what you sow. And I want more sin in the church. I want less. I preach on the solution. 
to the blood of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit and the truth of the resurrection and these communion. Amen.